All right, uh, let us start off with Alan Mendelssohn, The Boy from Mars by Daniel Pinkwater. One, I got off to a bad start at Bat Map Masterson Junior High School. My family had moved from my old school district during the summer, and I didn't know a single kid at the school. On top of that, it turned out that the kids at Bat Masterton put a lot of emphasis on how you look. This created a problem. I am a short, portly kid, and I wear glasses. Every other kid in the school was tall, had a suntan, and none of them wore glasses. Also, clothes wrinkle up on me. I don't know why this should be. Five minutes after I get dressed in the morning, everything is wrinkled. It looks like I slept in my clothes. Not only did I not know anyone on my first day, not only... Not only did I find out that a short, portly, wrinkled kid with glasses is an outcast in that school, but I also sat down on somebody's half-finished good humor bar in the schoolyard. That reduced my confidence. Then it turned out that the school was not expecting me. My records, grades, and whatever the old school was supposed to send, had, they had not sent, or they had sent them to the wrong place, or they had gotten lost. So I had to sit on this bench in the office for most of the morning, sort of sticking to the bench because of the leftover good humor on my seat, seat of my pants. Finally, they gave me this big pile of cards to fill out. Then I had to run all over the school getting teachers to sign the cards. Three or four times I had to go back to the office with notes from teachers saying that their class was full, or it was the wrong class, or that it conflicted with another class I was supposed to take. And each time I entered a classroom, the class would giggle at me. Then the teachers would ask my name. It was written right on top of every one of the cards, but the teacher would ask me to say it anyways. Leonard Niebel, I would say, and the kids in the, in the class would just go wild. I don't know why, but my name gets them every time. At lunchtime, I walked around the schoolyard. All the kids looked sort of grown up and unwrinkled. Some of the girls even had lipstick on. The kids stood around in groups, talking and laughing. Some guys were showing off, walking on top of benches, chasing each other and hollering. Nobody looked at me or said anything to me. I had a feeling that if I tried to talk to anybody, they wouldn't have been able to hear me. I looked for a quiet spot to eat my tuna, tuna fish sandwich. After lunch, I went to, back to the office. The lady there told me I had, come, I'd come, I had to come back at the beginning of each period. She looked at my cards and told me to go to gym class. I went. When I got to the gym, there was a bunch of kids sitting in the front row, row on the floor. The teacher was standing on a bench. He was wearing sunglasses and had a whistle lanyard around his neck. He had white sneakers on. I went around the kids sitting on the floor and came to him from the side, holding out a card he was supposed to sign. You're late, boy, he said in a very loud voice. Uh, the lady in the office, I'm supposed to... This card, you have to sign my... The teacher cut me off. Nobody comes late to gym, he shouted. He really scared me. I could see all his teeth. Anybody comes late? Anybody comes late to gym? He does five laps. Now, do five laps, chubby. Work off some of that lard. And while you're running, listen to what I'm telling the class. I started running, holding my stack of cards. You will get two pairs of gym shorts green, two pairs of sweat socks white, you will get a sweatshirt, gray, the gym teacher was shouting at the class. His name was Mr. Jarris. His voice was so loud it made my ears hurt, even if I ha even when I was making my turn at the far end of the gym. That's five, fat boy. Take a rest, Mr. Jarris said. Now, since none of you have any equipment, you can spend the rest of the period horsing around. Quietly! Mr. Jarris spun around, jumped off the bench, and walked through a little door at the back of the gym. I was sweating and out of breath. I expected the other kids to start up with Fat Boy and Chubby after Mr. Jarris had called me those things, which was unfair, since I'm actually not fat, but portly. That's what it says on the label I get when my clo on my <laughs> get when I get clothes in the department store. Boy is portly. The other kids didn't tease me. They didn't pay any attention to me at all. They went right to work, fooling with gym equipment, doing handstands, swinging from rings, stuff like that. I looked at the door Mr. Jarris had gone through. I wonder if I should go through and knock on it. I just stood there, holding my cards for a long time. Mr. Jarris came back. I said quietly! His voice made an echo. Now, come here, fatty. I'll sign that. I started to walk towards him. Run! I ran. Mr. Jarris signed my card. 
Now, by tomorrow, make sure that you have at least gym shoes. By the end of the week, I want you all to have all your equipment. Get Got that? He looked at my card. Nebel? Mr. Jarris went back through the little door. The gym class was the high point of the day for sheer unpleasantness, but all the other classes I went to were more or less the same. The teachers seemed annoyed that I was there, making them sign one more thing or send for an extra textbook, and not one kid said anything to me, although quite a few giggled at my name. By the time school let out and I started walking home, I was totally miserable. Our new school was almost a mile from, our new house was almost a mile from school, and I didn't like it. There wasn't one kid my age in the neighborhood, except for some very little kids, babies really. A couple of blocks away, there were no kids at all. About the only good thing that happened since we moved out of our apartment, old apartment in, our, in the old neighborhood was that my parents let me have a dog. The dog's name was Melvin, a big brown dog we got at the pound. I had had him since the middle of the summer, and he hadn't been able to learn a single trick. I spent about two weeks trying to teach Melvin to fetch a ball. I couldn't even get him to look at it. About the only thing Melvin could do was sort of, was uh, the only thing Melvin could do that was sort of unusual was walk in his sleep. Still, he seemed like me and would take naps in my, and would take naps in my room, snoring and mumbling while I read or worked on a model airplane. When I got home, Melvin was sleeping in the front hall. He opened one eye to say hello and then dozed off. My mother was in the kitchen cooking liver for Melvin's supper. Cooked liver was all he could eat. I hate the smell of liver cooking. The whole house smelled of it. Everything in the ha home was still sort of new. My parents had bought all new furniture when we moved. My mother had picked out a lot of stuff for my room, so it wouldn't look like a picture. She, it would look like a picture she had seen in a magazine. I wasn't allowed to put any tacks on the walls because of the plaid paper, plaid wallpaper, which was very expensive. But just perfect for a boy's room, my mother said. So I couldn't put any up any posters or pictures or anything. I flopped down on my bed, which had a plaid bedspread to match the wallpaper. How do you like your new school? My mother shouted from the kitchen. I told her it was fine. What else could I say? Melvin wandered in with his eyes half open and sort of crashed down on his elbows next to my bed. In 30 seconds, he was snoring. I closed my eyes and tried to pretend we were still living in the old apartment.